We're live. Welcome back to the We Are Gunsmith podcast with your boy Rob Tremonti. And James Mooney. And Jeremy New. And today we have John Anderson. The John Anderson. Yeah. IFBB Pro, Pro Strongman, ex professional wrestler, author. Speaker? I, be- I believe he's a speaker. Oh, I'm sure. With yeah, a voice sure. like that, you got to be <laughs> yeah. a fucking speaker. Yeah, can't wait till you guys hear this guy. This guy's got a fucking gnarly voice. Yeah. Anyway, if you don't know who John Anderson is, Google him real quick because he's got some gnarly traps. John, J O N, Anderson with an E. Yep. Man is a fucking tank. Yeah, he's crazy. And he's a. Uh, kind of the creator of the deep water principle which if you're not familiar with that it's basically it's a form of training where you're just getting super uncomfortable you're doing shit that you don't like and it makes you a better fucking person yeah end of story we're in now awesome let's do it baby do it do it welcome to the podcast john anderson (coughs) ifbb pro pro strongman ex-pro wrestler everything author (laughs) all around fucking Swiss Army knife of information. <laughs> Do you want to give the listeners and viewers like a, just a brief little background of, I don't know, just who you are? Well, I think it's probably best if we go back in time. Um, you know, you get, if we were to go, jump in a time machine and go back since I was 10 years old, you know, I was a fat little boy, um, very late bloomer, uh, scared of my own shadow. You know, I, I kind of knew, <clears throat> I knew what I wanted to do. You know, I, I had, I could, I, every time I saw a big muscular person, I was just enthralled, yeah. but I was looking for the, I was looking for the key to greatness in the bottom of the ice cream container. So I was making, <laughs> Dude, I was man. making no progress at all. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I can remember even back in those days, you know, was, you know, I'm 46 <clears throat> and so Back in those days, they didn't have like all of these different ways to assess a kid and his learning ability. So, you know, I was slow for sure. I had a hard time reading. Yep. You know, I'm sure if, if, if it was in current times, I'd have all these different letters attached to my name, OCD, ADD, all yeah. that bullshit. You know? yeah. But <clears throat> the bottom line was, is that at a young age, that really hindered me uh, because, you know, I was. I just didn't have, I was, I was scattered brain. I had a hard time uploading information. I had to work harder than everybody else just to stay at par. <clears throat> but realistically, that's what made me who I am because, you know, I remember going into uh, junior high. I told my mom, I said, look, you know, we're going into a new school. There's going to be five elementaries or whatever is pouring into this one junior high go to the office, talk to the principal and get me out of those classes because, you know, they were called, it was called the resource room to the teachers, otherwise known as the retard room to all the students, you know? So every kid that's coming out of this door, I mean, I'm coming out of this door with kids that are almost, they're, that are visibly, you know, troubled in terms of, you know, like right, yeah. not, not full blown down syndromes and stuff, but I mean, you could clearly see they were off and uh, yeah. I was, it, that's a hard place to be for a kid, yeah. you know? And there's no question I was slow, but I didn't belong in there. <laughs> so anyway, well, maybe I did. It's hard to say. <laughs> anyway, so I said to my mom, get me out of those classes. And so junior high hit and I was in with all the all the normal classes. And holy shit, man, I had to work my ass off. You know, as I'm playing sports and in those days, <clears throat> you had to have a two point average across the board to play. Right, right. And I was just, I was a three sporter and I was just always fighting to keep my head above water. I remember my final game of my seventh grade season, I didn't get to play because my math score dropped low, oh, but I, it wasn't for a lack of effort, man. I was busting my ass anyway. So long and short of it is that all of that stuff I just described, all that shit really was kind of the foundation and, and the fiber of me because I learned how to work just tirelessly hard just to be just to be even par <clears throat> and at the time i didn't really understand how my thought process worked i was always repeating stuff over and over and over and that's what helped me learn that was also really part of my you know whatever ocd ac whatever you want to call it all that shit and as i got older i started to realize that this stuff actually was a huge strength for me and 
So I started to get to that point where something, you know, of course, you, you know, I saw Arnold Schwarzenegger and Conan. I'd seen Mr. T and I was just, I knew, I, I mean, the, the best thing that happens, I knew what I wanted. And then I had these shortcomings, which now I kind of figured out, turn them into strengths. And so off I went, man, I was, <clears throat> you know, it was not uncommon for me to go to the gym and be there three, three and a half hours when I was 16, 17 years old. Oh, man. And of course, you're just looking for information and those days there was no journals there was no podcasts how personal trainers weren't even around yeah. yet yeah if there were youtube were, or anything to they learn. were they yeah. were dumb as hell they didn't understand what the hell was going on you you could never ever get close to a person that looked the way that you were trying to go because there were so few of them around and they were all probably down somewhere in venice beach or wherever the yeah. you know wasn't like you'd not like today's times where you could find people like me walking around in big cities yeah. it just didn't exist and everybody's so, a coach nowadays it seems oh, like you know i was whether making they jokes. should be or not if, if you want to if you want to learn to cook chinese food don't hire a mexican to teach you you know yeah. it's like <laughs> it's a fucking t-shirt right there if you wanna, everybody wants to fuck everybody wants a fucking coach but jesus christ Okay, you want to be a powerlifter? You don't fucking hire a CrossFit guy. Yeah, you know right, what I mean? Exactly. You want to be a bodybuilder? Don't hire a strongman coach. Hire what you fucking need for Christ's sake. Anybody with a keyboard will convince you they can do it. Yeah. Yep. But you got to be smarter than that. You know, it's like when you're buying a car, you walk on a car lot, you buy the first fucking deal, you're going to get robbed. Oh yeah. You know, 100. for sure. I saw cars, so I I know how that is. <laughs> <laughs> so you used to rob people. Oh, nice. I used to. Good I job. Mean, I didn't rob people. <laughs> I know how the workings of car sales go. So yeah, yeah. I can relate. <clears throat> so moving forward, basically, you know, I'm just doing anything I can to gather information. And TV at that point was a, was basically our only major media. Mm-hmm. You know, the internet didn't even exist. Cell phones didn't exist. And so you remember in those days, you see those commercials, you know, it was drink milk, then it was eat beef. Remember it was all those different commercials you see? Well, when I was a kid, it was eat wheat. And so I'm fucking eating loaves of wheat bread thinking that this is, <laughs> I think, and this is going to be the muscle builder, right? Yeah. And so, oh, man. I mean, literally I'm going, I'm showing up that now, by now I'm a senior in high school and you know, I've kind of come out of my chubby little phase. Right. I'm still, you know, having to work harder than everybody else. But at that point, I've kind of earned, you know, my position with my peers, you know, through hard work. And I'd started to kind of bloom a little bit. And so I'm showing up to the goddamn lunchroom with two loaves of bread. And people are looking at me, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> and I'm just like eating bread, you know, just thinking that's oh, the yeah. next thing. What, so, what would you say when they ask what you're doing? I say, I'm trying to get big. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was kind of a thing I had to answer, you know, everybody knew what I was doing. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? You're, you're in the gym three hours a day. They, they know what you're trying to do. Yeah. I mean, I would, uh, my senior year of high school shit, you know, by that time you pretty much have the credits you need. So you have, you know, if you could, you could have let early dismissal. You could take a bunch of art classes. Fuck. I had my own weightlifting class. I had a dead period with a weightlifting class. And then I was a TA. So I had three weightlifting classes during the day. Oh, yeah. You know? Training three times so, a day. That's, that's <laughs> life right there. <laughs> and I stacked two of them right back close together, too. <laughs> Smart man. There you go. Anyway, so it's summertime now. And, and it's after my senior year. And uh, I'm, you know, just doing my normal BS work just to keep busy in the, in the summer. So my mom will stay off my back. <clears throat> and... She's basically making my food for me so I can, you know, she's cooking for me, which is basically just throwing the wheat bread in a, in a brown paper bag and sending me out the door. <laughs> All of a sudden, somehow we ended up, we didn't have, for some reason, we didn't, maybe the store was out. I don't know. We didn't have wheat bread. So I was like, well, shit, what am I going to eat? So I'm looking around. I see that, you know, there's, we got a ton of tuna. Well, fuck, I guess I'm eating tuna today. So I threw a bunch of cans of tuna in a sack with a can opener and a fork, you know, oh, probably God. some mustard something off i went and it lasted a couple of days and this was the turning point right here it sounds really fucking weird but it's the truth <clears throat> the next couple days after eating you know primarily tuna i was freaking blown away at like the gym i was like what the hell's going on this is a, this is easier than it was last Dude, week huh. you know next level shit right there my recovery protein? my yes it was the protein exactly yeah. my recovery 
had, you know, keep in mind, I'm in the gym three hours, so I'm way overtraining, and I'm not giving my body any of the amino acids slash protein <laughs> yeah. needed to recover with wheat bread. So all of a sudden, it gets all this protein, and I start building, you know, I start recovering real quick. And it was just, I mean, it was, it was too, you, you would have had to be fucking blind and stupid and deaf not to see the signals. Yeah. And so that's when I discovered protein, man. And at that point, Everybody was still all oh, carbohydrate this, carbohydrate that, and I was like bullshit, man. I just I knew it in my gut. Yeah. So at that point forward, I started from that day forward, moving forward. I have been eating. In those days, it was four. It's more like six or seven now. Of when I say flesh, we're talking chicken, beef, yep. primarily chicken and beef, a little fish here and there, every day, and that has been my staple six, of my six diet. Pounds. Is that what you said? Yeah, when I was young, it was four, and now it's up to now it's up to. You know, when you buy that four pound sack, right? Yeah. It's Costco. it's four exactly four pound sack of chicken. It's four pounds, but then you know later in life you realize Jesus Christ, I cooked this. There's not four pounds it's here. Like two pounds. Almost. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So then I was just for years I would just dump the whole thing into a into a pot, boil it. And that was my food for the day. It was easy. Mm. Or barbecue it. As I got older and I started to be a little bit more precise with wanting to know what I was eating, kind of stuff, it was really just counting grams of protein. Then I started to realize, holy shit, this weight is <clears throat> is basically, you know, raw. So when I started doing I was when I was weighing the stuff when I was cooked, I was like, Jesus Christ, now I realize how much I'm eating. It's it, literally now it's like six, seven pounds a day. So long and short of it, that's the my my nutrition plan and my work ethic and my OCD. Basically, my ability to just repeat processes over and over and over, day after day after day, which actually makes me feel good. You know, you take me out of my rhythm, I go in the fucking corner and start rocking like Rain Man. Yeah, you know what I mean, right. I think, I think, I mean, I don't know, I'm like so that. So basically, really, when I tell people all the time, one of the first things you got to do to be successful is understand yourself. You can't expect yourself to excel at something that you have not become really good at yet not say that you don't work on your weaknesses but take your strengths and make some progress with that shit as you're cleaning up your weak spots so you know my ability to <clears throat> go to the gym every day and eat the same thing for every meal is my strength and so of course i rode that like zorro and off i went and <clears throat> so by now moving forward i'm in <clears throat> kind of middle of college and this protein thing has just gone crazy, man. I'm <clears throat> 240 pounds. I'm just way stronger than I look. I used to love to go. And this, so we're talking like 1992. So I show up into a Gold's gym, <clears throat> and I put 405 on the bar for, say, a squat. And I wouldn't, you know, you got people doing fives, maybe a set of 10. I'd knock that fucker out for a set of 20. And people are like, what <laughs> is this kid doing? Who the That's fuck crazy. is that guy? And those days, you know, 405 for 20 was Re yeah. really uncommon right you know <clears throat> and then as times went on i ended up working my all the way up to shit mid fives for high fives for 20s but at that point i'd become a pro strong man and, and <clears throat> what i'm getting at is that all of this shit that i was doing you know the the repetitive process you know the, the eating the protein just really immersing myself into things that that I was good at so that I could make progress and even along with the training I was never really I was never really attracted to set of five you know of course I wanted to lift big weights but I also wanted just the, I knew that 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 feeling of just punishment had the big return yeah. and so <clears throat> long and short of it is I'm also now let's jump forward again I'm out of uh, out of college uh, I'm not quite big and strong enough to do what I want to do yet, or so I think. And so I, I start a painting company, keep working on my goals. I graduated University of Portland <clears throat> with a major in philosophy, excuse me, major in theology, minor in philosophy. What the fuck are you going to do with that? <laughs> you know? So not make a lot of that, money, was, that's for sure. that was just pretty much because it was the easiest way for me to graduate because I spent all my time chasing pussy and, and lifting weights, you know, my. For my, I was a five year guy, <clears throat> so it was a father chap Catholic school. He was my, he was my advisor. He calls me and said, "You got to declare a major." Yeah. I said, "Well, what am I closest to?" And he looks. He goes, "Well, he goes, if we do this and this, you'll get a major and a minor. Let's go." I didn't even care what he said. I just graduate. <clears throat> so, 
Anyway, I started my painting company, continue to work tirelessly on eating and training, and I'm just getting stronger and stronger. And I look like a big guy, but people are blown away at how much stronger I am than the way I look. Ended up getting to that point where I thought, okay, it's time. So I take my painting company, and here again, my OCD and my willingness to repeat the same shit over and over, I built that painting company in a five-year period up to where I could sell it for almost a half million bucks, and off I went. Wow. So, okay, awesome. so I'm a young kid, you know. Yeah. I've just taken my, you know, a young kid that started off in the retard room <laughs> that kind of figured out how to exploit his what seemed to be weaknesses into strengths, and now – I'm in my mid twenties. I just sold a company I built from scratch and I have actually literally gone during that period, that same period I've turned pro and strongman. Mm. And, uh, basically my strongman career from my first contest until my, until I made two, team USA was only about 15 months. And the beautiful thing about it, my sale of my company came right about the time that I made team, team USA. So it was like, a, it was like, I mean, literally the, wow. the fucking stars just aligned. So here I got the, I got the stability financially and I didn't stop there. I started flipping houses and shit when I was, you know, I wasn't traveling, <clears throat> but you know, really I was focused on my dreams as strong man and, and an athlete and being an athlete. So off I went, man, I'm freaking loving life. That's awesome. All the training that I did that seemed so weird and so outside the box that people are saying, why, why, why? Now, those whys have turned into hows, you know? Yeah. When, you know, strong man, you're doing stuff for 60 to 90 seconds. So you get me under a squat event, you know, I've been doing this my whole fucking life, you know? You're going to put, you know, in those days, uh, like a car squat was like 650. Yeah. Oh, that's and, for you when you're doing that. Oh, fuck, man. I was blowing that shit away, you know? <laughs> I mean, I had the gas tank. My muscle endurance was was the foundation. Of course, I was strong, but the muscles could fire at a high rate for, you know, I say a long time, meaning 60 to 90 seconds. If somebody's never really gone balls to the wall for that amount of time, it's like the closest thing I could say would be <clears throat> go out on the street, set your clock, a stopwatch, and sprint like you're running for your life for 90 seconds. You won't make it 90 seconds. Oh, no way. You'll, die. you'll just everything will, turn to, everything will turn to slow motion, and you'll end up on your knees out in the street. Oh, yeah. And it takes a long time to be able to push yourself to, to really go all the way through that 90 seconds. But with all this goofy shit I've been doing, it just it was just perfect. You know, so this is also about the time that I started to realize that carbohydrate – at that point really had become kind of a secondary thing. It was more of, I didn't really work to put them in. Carbohydrates were, carbohydrates were finding their way in with, you know, sauces and shit that I was using to get my protein down. <clears throat> so you never really found me adding rice to a meal. You know, I was taking steak and chicken and, you know, I was putting ketchup and, you know, at those times we just, we still didn't know that much about nutrition. As I moved forward, I started to realize, holy shit, I really am, and it, keto really wasn't, it wasn't even around yet, and Adkins hadn't even started, and I was doing this, so I was basically kind of in a, <clears throat> a semi-keto Adkins, it was really undefined at that point, yeah. but truthfully, these high levels of protein for all these years and this crazy training I was doing is really what made me who I was. So I basically moving forward is a hell long answer for a quick question up front in the podcast, but <laughs> <laughs> everybody can kind of get to know the, the, you know, the timeline. So I had a killer strongman career. Um, basically retired from that, had a back surgery, you know, in those days I was still slightly undersized, but that was what we call the modern day era. That was like yeah. the margin, Maris Pujanowski era. Oh yeah. So that six foot, six one, six two, you know, two ninety to three ten, three twenty. That was that yeah. was the, the majority of us, and I was kind of fitting right in. In the beginning, I was right in the bottom of that. In the end, I was right in the top. But you know, the littler guys, you know, we we break down faster. You know, you know, and I'm trying to load a four hundred pound stone next to Phil Fister, and he can lock his hands around the back side of that son of a bitch, and I'm like this it just it tears you up oh, yeah. so back surgery came i'd done very well for myself 
lots of sponsors because that was the dot com boom. Right. Uh, <clears throat> had an energy drink that was paying me monthly. If said contracted me. So I talked to my agent. I said, hey, uh, you know, what are when I was I had this this killer uh, with Udo's oil, man. It was uh, a truck pull exhibition contract. Every time I pulled the truck, they just flew me in. I would pull a truck, do an interview freaking 10,000 bucks. Bam. You know, it was killer. You know, I, I was just truly living my dream. You know, the fat little boy that was looking for, you know, the answers at the bottom of the ice cream right. and finally, you know, realized his dreams, you know. Yeah. Anyway, so I had the back surgery. My agent said, hey, you know, if you want to continue to be an athlete, <clears throat> it's not going to be here because, you know, the surgeon has been real clear that if you go back, you're going to have to go back and get another disc, you know, done, fixed yeah. in probably less than a year. Because the one above that they had to fix was damaged also. I had three herniations and, excuse me, yeah, uh, three herniations and one severe rupture. Yeah. And that, I competed with that rupture so long, it actually kind of, that what happened is the shit that's inside that disc squirts out. I competed on that thing for years. I just would not, I, there's no way I was going to stop. I was where I was, and I was in a lot of pain, but I didn't care. But that shit that comes out, it hardens and it calcifies. And what happens is it starts sawing through the nerve going down my left leg. Oh, damn. And so basically I have a little nerve. I shouldn't say a little. I got some nerve damage in my left leg. Like if you look at my next body going show, if you look closely, my calf, my left calf is atrophied because I, there's a the inside head. I can barely make it tighten up, uh -huh. you know? Yes. Anyway, but it's, I got no issues, man. I wouldn't take back a thing. So <clears throat> anyway, he said, you want to keep being an athlete? we got to find something else for you to do. Well, fuck, I'm 34. What the hell am I going to do? There's no money in powerlifting. There's no money. You know, I, I was, you know, to become a pro bodybuilder is not just, yeah, you don't just you know, hop show in. up and do it. That's a big fucking deal. So he said, well, he goes, I think wrestling is a way for you to go. I'm like, wrestling? Holy shit. I never was a fan as a kid, you know? So he basically – fraudulated a resume and uh -huh. <clears throat> sent it off to, to Japan because Japan was really killer market over there because you go, it was almost like an extended fireman schedule. You go work for two weeks, come home for two weeks, work for two weeks, come home. And they were paying killer over there. And also the reason why they would put me in Japan was because they call it strong style. So it's really, it's much more, it's not what you see on American TV. You know, people get bloody noses, fat lips, and occasional tooth will get knocked out. So they're banging around it a lot more. Yes, it's predetermined. Yeah. But the fact that it was rough and a little more aggressive allowed me to kind of hide the fact that I had no fucking clue what I was doing. <laughs> you, you can cover up your deficiencies right That's there. Funny, but... dude. That's... Yeah, literally. And so they were smart. You know, they... I worked for a smaller company for about a year, got picked up by New Japan, which is the biggest one. They're doing Tokyo Dome shows, and they knew what I was about. They're not dumb. So they put me with people that could make me look good, yeah. you know? <clears throat> and so anyway, so I did that for, uh, Jesus Christ, the next seven years. And 42, they released me, which is kind of common, you know? Yeah. I mean, for someone to get been out of shape because you get released in athletics they need to fucking wake up that's what athletics is all about yeah, you know it just happened were you were you known as like the villain or like the crowd favorite or what kind of wrestler were you i was actually <clears throat> I, the the term would be heel or baby face i'm a good guy or a bad guy so i was basically a good guy they teamed me up with <clears throat> a guy named Na nanabu nakanishi he was my my partner okay. and he was a big guy too um and so the two of us just, they ate us up, man. We actually got tag team of the year a few times in Japan. Nice. Uh, yeah, it was killer. I mean, they, they loved us. Are you, you guys know, still but, friends? You know, we, we don't really, he, he doesn't speak very good English. Oh, uh, yeah. That's kind of hard. And, <laughs> I mean, he, we still, we'll still trade a few messages online here and there, right. you know? Right, yeah. But, uh, you know, keep in mind, I mean, and, and I don't mean to sound like an ass when I say this, but I was going over there to make money. Yeah. You know, I was yeah, looking for friends. Yeah, I got family. I got friends at home, you know, <clears throat> and it's a tough world to get in. You know, the people that are coming in, you know, the people that are already in are trying to kind of suppress the ones coming in. Well, so competition. Yeah, makes sense. My, my partner at first, if he, he fucking guy did not like me, you know, because he was afraid I was going to come be the new big guy. Yeah. You know, he doesn't want you so, to take a spot. 
Exactly, exactly. So I just had to really kind of play down and let him be the leader of our team, and then it kind of chilled out a little bit. But anyway, um, so I did that, got released, came home. I'm like, fuck, man, the juices are still flowing. You know, that's that that fat little boy that's looking for the answers at the bottom of the ice cream container. I still see that fucker when I look in the mirror once in a while. So you still, you know? you still have a chip on your shoulder to this day? I, you know, I can't say it's a chip on my shoulder. I think it's I look at it as a truly a blessing. Mm-hmm. But I guess the thing that I was what I'm referencing is that it's like there's a certain there is a certain I guess you could you could I guess you could argue it's a chip because. It's so much of what I do is to, you know, like the joke I make is as long as I do what I do, that fat little son of a bitch stays on that side of the mirror, yeah, you know? Exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, I think there's a difference between, you know, me running from, you know, running from being that guy, you know, the fat little boy versus still having that juice, that competitive juice in me that wants to go, you know? So came home and, uh, Fuck, what am I going to do? And I guess, well, the next step here, the only thing left at 42 is to bodybuild because they don't care about your age. You don't really get <clears throat> contracted based on performance like you do for wrestling or for strongman. And I had all my sponsors that followed me all the way through. So as long as I was visible at a high level, I was good to go. So I thought, well, I guess it's time to go the bodybuilding route. And, and every time I changed my course, <clears throat> you know, the pressure was on. Oh, yeah, yeah. They weren't going to sit behind me for years while I waited to get back to a high level, mm. you know? They want you to perform right now. Fuck yeah. So I basically came home, <clears throat> uh, hired a bodybuilding coach because I knew that I needed – there was so much information I didn't know, and I didn't have time to learn it. I needed to get to that bigger stage. So came home, hired the coach, Kim Albrecht, who's a German guy. who was an Olympian competitor, kind of a hard ass, which suited me perfectly, <clears throat> and – Boom, went to the first contest, won that fucker. Four months later, won, won my pro card, actually five months later. Jeez. And so literally I became wow. a pro bodybuilder in two contests, which puts me in a school, I believe, or a club of less than five people. Yeah, that's pretty elite uh, status right there. Yeah, when I did Palumbo's, uh, Dave Palumbo's show right after I turned pro, he's all, he's all do you understand that there are a lot of people out there who have spent their lives trying to turn pro? And you just done this in, in, in nine months. Oh, yeah. You know, she, he said, there's probably a lot of people that love you. There's probably a lot of people that are really pissed off right now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Shit, we know a guy that he's he's been bodybuilding for almost 20 years, and he still, he still hasn't got his pro card. Yeah. It's crazy. Well, <clears throat> so wrapping all this together <clears throat> really is now where I, I basically drop my philosophy, which – Truthfully, is is the the name is a little misleading, but it was so perfect when I was doing it. It's called Deep Water. I wrote a book about it. Speaking of which, I'm actually have my book is free for all your listeners. Go to my Instagram, click on the link, go to the profile, click on the link. There's a little drop down, and you can download my my first ebook called Deep Water for free. That's awesome. And we'll throw that in the in the bio here. What's that? I said, we'll throw that in the bio when we post yeah, it. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> anyway, so long and short of it, really what encapsulates all this is my deep water philosophy. And in deep water, what I mean by that is it's first, it really started off with a set of weightlifting, probably on those high rep, you know, squat sets when I was young. And the concept is, you are swimming as fast as you can out into the deep water with no concern how the fuck you're going to get back to shore. Mm-hmm. And most people look at life and the fact that they're saving a little for the next set. They're saving a little for tomorrow. They're saving a little here. And what that does is it, it really just stunts your growth. Because if you push yourself with everything you do, your rate of personal growth and whatever you're focused on is way beyond the people around you that are holding back. And truthfully, that little, that little concept right there, I applied to everything I did in my life, my business that I sold, you know, training when I was younger, my three careers, you know, and long and short of it now, it's really killer now because, you know, I'm in that place in my life where, you know, of course, I, I'm still working hard moving forward, but I'm having such a it's, it's almost like a new dimension of my life that I did not see before. And that's, 
helping people because I've basically come into this place where a I was a you know I help people in so many ways you know sometimes I have people I'll help like I got a couple of clients that are 500 pounders and we've got there we've we actually taught them a new lifestyle to where they're changing their lives you know awesome. I've helped people lose lots of weight I've helped people gain a lot of weight because see I'm not this guy with food that just says get it done I realize okay the reason you can't get it done is because there's something there's a trigger in there you know like when I was a when I was a little boy you know my self-esteem issues and all that shit a lot of times when I was looking for the greatness in the bottom of the ice cream containers, because somebody gave me a titty twister at school or who knows what it was. So I was using that for comfort. Right. And I think when I was doing my escape with food is when I did all my dreaming. That makes sense. Yeah. But long and short of there was something that prompted me to do that. And everybody has that. You know, some people run to booze. Some people run to drugs. Some people run to food. I was a food guy. Yeah. And so the thing that I love about people that are trying to use, you know, any sort of health and fitness for their benefit is I get into the mental psyche part of it. And that's really not around. You know, you get these people who have you know, gained and lost 100 pounds over and over. It's because they don't they haven't fixed the programming that made them get there to begin with. So, yes, they make the physical transformation, but they're still the same person mentally. And bam, they go right back to where they started, sometimes worse. So right. for my people, whether you want to lose a bunch of weight or you want to gain a bunch of weight, we it's it, we we start from the inside out, you know. And, of course, we start making progress with training and dieting. But I am immediately fixated on the person and how they react with, with in terms of their, their mental positions and their emotions because that's like – it's like the computer to uh, it's a big piece of machinery. If that big piece of machinery, the computer's all fucked up, you know, that big piece of machinery is not going to work. And unfortunately, the fitness industry, fitness industry doesn't look at it that way. No. You know, they preach it and, like diets. what's that? I said they preach it like diets instead of the lifestyle change that you're talking about. It's yeah, all exactly. like fixes. And, right. Yeah, you, totally. And if you if you take the word diet and go back to the roots, it means lifestyle. It has nothing to do with – like we think diet, we think restriction, mm -hmm. yeah. you know? I mean my programs, when I give someone a program in terms of – I don't give a shit if they want to gain or lose weight. They're going to look at the first plan and go, I can't eat all this. It's because I'm feeding their metabolism. The more I have them eat, the faster that son of a bitch goes – and it's not that simple, but that's one of the main philosophies of my program. So, you know, never hungry, you know, never out of energy, never cranky, you know. So anyway, that's kind of uh, that's kind of where I am now in terms of, you know, I'm in my third career as a bodybuilder. Um, you know, I'm, I'm having a great time with my career. I'm having a great time giving back and helping people. That's why I started giving away my my uh my book deep water yep, that's uh, awesome. yeah you know so it's killer you know i actually just created a you know because people come to me and they want to work with me but you know my time is valuable and <clears throat> a lot of times people don't have the money yeah and so i created another program it's called ten dollar fit and it's you can also find it off my instagram but the beautiful thing about this there's three of my different programs three on the nutrition side three on the training side and you can buy a four month program for ten bucks a month, so it's forty bucks a program. Wow. And this, this is this is all shit that I've used in my journey. Now, granted, two of the diets I had to put carbohydrates in because most people are carb eaters. But yeah. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Because go you, ahead. Because your whole your take on carbs is way different than most, and then like you have these clients that you. I was going to ask if you give them carbs or if you put them on the same kind of diet you're on. So basically what I'll do is I'll usually I'll, I want to see where someone starts off because I can't just I have to, the, the first the first layer, as I call it, which constantly changes is, is really the first step away from what they're doing. So if, even if they're a carb rich person, I'm going to bring them down to two, maybe three servings of carbs a day. But then a month or two into this, they're going to start asking me, hey, you know, do I need the carbohydrate? And I don't tell them they have to get rid of it. It eliminates itself. It eliminates itself. Once we get the protein, we get the essential fats all dialed in. The essential fats are so much better of a fuel source in terms of energy and everything else because the carbohydrate is very volatile. Blood sugar goes up and down. Yeah. 
you know, people get tired in the afternoon, they get headaches, they get cranky, all from low blood sugar. They have no idea. So then when you when you're constantly feeding them six, seven times a day with essential fats, that blood sugar level is so nice and flat, they're like, I feel I've never felt this great. and then they just realize that the carbohydrate is kind of a moot point. So I don't really take it away from them. They end up kind of slowly, you know relinquishing their their need for carbohydrates here's a great little scenario really helps people get a perspective on carbohydrates <clears throat> all right you got this guy over here and this guy over here. they're playing basketball they go for a ball somehow they both twist their ankles they're limping the ship the game's over better go to the hospital we think we broke our ankles <clears throat> so these two guys go in there doctor takes a look swollen x-ray no break severely sprained here, here, you each get a bottle of pills, pain pills. Take a pill a day <clears throat> until the pain goes away. You're good to go. So the smart one does exactly that. Takes a pill a day, two, three, four days, feels better, puts it away. The dipshit continues to take that fucking pill every day until it's gone, yeah. right? right? Well, now those pills are gone, and he needs another pill just to feel normal. Right. He doesn't need the pill for pain. He needs it just to function. It's become a crutch. Yep. You know, it's, it's not a tool anymore. It's a crutch. So when you when that person says, God, I need that pill just to feel normal today. I need to function. Now, let's rewind to think about how many people say things to the effect of, you know, if I don't have enough carbohydrates, I, I just can't function. Mm, right. They're talking about carbohydrates like a fucking drug, man. It's like, Jesus Christ, if you use it properly – it's a fucking jackhammer. Yeah. You know, if you use it too much, you just need it to feel normal. Right. That makes sense? Yeah. You see that a lot with like the sugar, like the, the addiction to the sugars and the, yep. yeah. Oh, sugar addiction is real as it gets, brother. Yeah. You know? Well, shit, even caffeine, like pre workout stuff. Sometimes I have pre workout to like feel normal. It's not even to. <laughs> yeah, I'm no, not even I, get like jacked up anymore for the gym. Brother, like, I just I just put an Instagram video out telling people, look, this pre-workout thing is very confusing because you use these hard-hitting pre-workouts. Sometimes they're like, this was this one, C4, Jesus Christ. Yeah. I've never tried it. But, I mean, literally people get so twigged out on that shit that if they don't have it again the next day, they it's it's almost like getting up and having a, a an alcoholic gets up and has a shot of vodka just to kind of wake up. Exactly. You know? That's what I'm saying. And yeah. so I tell people, look, number one, if you're using a pre-workout, use a mild one. You know, number two – Twice a week, man, and not back to back. Yeah, you know. Yeah. You, so, but it's it's very true. Free workouts are the same thing. You can turn into a crutch in literally a week. Oh, yeah. you know. It, it, so it really that's been a hell of a lot. That's a hell of a long answer to a, one question. <laughs> you guys want to point me in a different direction? Yeah. So let's talk about the the deep water training a little bit. So like. Give us an example of kind of what what does that look like? Like, let's say you're going in for for a squat workout. What what would one of your deep water kind of training well, cycles? On that level, like? <clears throat> going back to helping people, in my Instagram, if you click that link, you're going to get a free sample of a deep water training. It's a it's a huh. it's really literally lays it out. Oh, that's sick. That's a lot sick. of big, a lot of big nasty sets, a lot of compound movement sets. So, like, here's a. Here's a classic <clears throat> deep water, uh, and keep in mind it always cycles. You can't do this for more than a couple of weeks. Then you got to kind of cycle away, then back in. But that's part of what makes it work so well. So imagine this: <clears throat> we're gonna four of us are gonna we're gonna train and we're gonna do a posterior chain workout, which most people would think deadlift, right? right. Well, posterior chain runs from the back of your neck down to the to your Achilles tendon. It's a whole chain back there. So First five sets, we're going to get good and warmed up. First five sets, you're going to do, we're going to do a, a set of deadlift. Eight to ten reps. It's going to, be, going to be tough. It should be a challenging set. As soon as you're done, you're going to go straight to a pull-up bar. You're going to do a set of failure pull-ups. And you'll take whatever rest you need between, execute that five times, <clears throat> five sets through. Okay, then we'll, we'll, we'll change up a little bit. Now we're going to set up a stiff-legged deadlift or maybe a sumo deadlift and we're going to go to a wide grip reverse grip pull-up 
Uh, we're going to do that for five sets. So you're basically hitting a, a rep range on the uh, and on the deadlift that is going to be kind of a nut, but you can do it. And it's going to fall back a little bit. So that first series of five, we're on that eight to ten. Then the next five that we're doing, which is the say the stiff legged and the reverse grip champ, the reverse grip pull up, that might be you know a ten to twelve rep range, right? Now we're now we've done ten supersets of deadlift and a pull up or deadlift variation, pull up variation. We got one more to go. <clears throat> we're going to set up whatever variation of deadlift we that we haven't done that we feel is going to be the most efficient after we've already had a serious ass kicking, <laughs> and we're going to go. Another big monster superset. Maybe we'll do that deadlift at 12 to 15 reps into it right into a bent over row or into uh, another variation of a pull up. So we're talking big, nasty stuff all put together. Another one I love is a shoulder workout. <clears throat> we're going to have three different variations of, of, say, a press. Maybe we've got a standing, uh, standing strict press with a barbell. Boom, straight to a set of failure dips do that five times then maybe we're going to go to a, a seated dumbbell press you're going to do that you know that 10 or 12 reps boom dips to fail five times through so it's 15 sets of big fucking nasty supersets and these things kick your ass and i'm telling you people that do this they're like i've never felt anything like this before i can't believe the changes that i'm going through in just a two-week period because here again, I designed these workouts to make it where you can't lay up. That makes sense? Yeah. There's no way to do a set of nasty deadlifts and go lay up on a set of pull-ups. Yeah. You're going to hang there like a fucking fish if you lay up. <laughs> yeah. So that being said, it's really that allows people to start to realize how, how beneficial it can be by literally laying it down every set without worried about the next one. You know, if you're worried about the next 14 sets you got, you're not going to push it on the first. Fuck no. Especially when you feel on that. I mean, you got to think of don't think about 14 more. You know, even when it's on the last one, the 15th, <clears throat> I have to think, OK, you know what? So last fucking set and I'm beat. But this is the difference. I could go through her and just kind of get through it or I could fucking put the pedal down just as hard as I did on the second or third set. And that's the whole concept. There is no tomorrow. There is no next set. Put all your shit on the line. And what happens to people is, let's say the four of us did that, that deadlift workout I was talking about, the pull-up workout. Mm -hmm. The first time we did it, <clears throat> but halfway through, you guys would, because it was your first time, you would be like, whoa, this is heavy. Something's going on here. <clears throat> Let's say that all of a sudden a week later we did it again, you're gonna you're gonna literally see and feel the 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 improvements just in a week. You know, then when you wrap back to this, you know, a couple weeks later, I mean it's the changes and the forward progression of game are you cannot mistake it. It's just it's they're too big and they're too easy to recognize. And the beautiful thing about putting yourself in this environment, this state of mind. <laughs> is it stretches out your capacity for pain. It stretches out your mental capacity to deal with anything challenging. It, deal, it, it stretches out your physical capacity for workload. So here again, going back to what I seen in the beginning, you are growing as an individual at such a rapid rate and whatever you apply this methodology to. That makes sense? Yeah. Yep. 100%. And that's really the concept. If you really... Deep water is really renowned for training, but in essence, the people that get it, it starts to pour over. And I don't sell life when I talk about it, but it'll sell itself because you start doing this in the gym. Yep. Next thing you know, things in life that were once harder are a fucking joke. Yeah. Yeah. And now now it's, it's like a good cancer and you just become this fucking highly, highly efficient, you know, no, there is no way to get through a deep water, water workout with an excuse. And as soon as you, I'm telling you, I swear to God, and this I tell people all the time, go through one week, seven day period where you don't make a single fucking excuse and look how much more effective that week is than an average week of your life. That's, that's fucking amazing advice, actually. You know, cause... Oh, buddy, I'm telling you. And you start, you start kind of, you start programming that, that mindset in these fucking workouts like we're talking about, you know what I mean? 
especially, I mean, what are you going to do? You, you, you're in a position where it's not like we're doing a set of deadlifts and going to a fucking cable pushdown where you can lay up. Yeah. You know, and you're hanging from a fucking pull up bar. You know, you, you either do it or you don't. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And if you're an excuse maker, you know, and a serious excuse maker, you won't even embark on that some something like that. You know, I mean, if if someone is not willing to at least be open to not making excuses, then it's not a program for them. You know, they kind of weed themselves out real quick. I bet. Yeah, exactly. And and realistically, there's a lot of people who have actually kind of done it, <clears throat> got kicked in the ass and pushed aside, and then realize, you know what? I didn't give it my all. It, it almost teaches them yeah. that they're not trying as hard as they should. Oh yeah, you, you know, see, you see that all the time. Like people will talk about, oh yeah, I, I fucking killed myself, but then you don't realize that you're setting that limitation of what you think is killing yourself. You haven't actually, you haven't actually reached that point yet. Yeah, one hundred percent, brother, one hundred percent. So it's it's been a really, uh, you know, I'll tell you, it's it's another thing I always tell people is. You know, early on, I said, know yourself, know your strength, the weaknesses. But I think really what it comes down to is sometimes the I should say sometimes I really stand on this. The worst things that happen to you are going to be the best. You just don't know at the time. You know, if I hadn't had that kind of rocky childhood, being a little bit of being a little slow, being a dumb fucker, hiding my emotions in ice cream. Tanner, right. I wouldn't be talking to you guys right now. I'd probably be working some fucking desk job like every other dipshit, you know, that yeah. that just basically decided to, you know, follow the the goddamn rules of society. That's another one I love to tell people right here. This is probably my favorite fucking saying ever. Don't break the rules. Don't break the laws. You won't get thrown in jail. But there's all these rules that society has created for us that we follow like their law mm-hmm. fuck that shit you know well, who says that we have to follow the the goddamn rules of society yep. you know yep. I, I i have i want nothing to do when i when when i get up in the morning my feet hit the floor i'm fucking jacked to do what i'm going to do for the day if money didn't exist i my day wouldn't change that's not many people can say that, no, no. you know, I mean, I, I have, my life is set up where <clears throat> it, I live in a, I live in a killer place. I live in the water, San Francisco Bay. My gym, my training facility is two miles down the street. My little girl's school, uh, middle school and high school. I don't have to get on the fucking freeway. You know, awesome. when I cross the freeway to take them to their school and I look at the freeway, just jammed full of people sitting there in traffic. I sit there and I tell my little girls, I said, look, you see that those people allowed life to choose them, right? Choose your life. Do not wait until life chooses you. Cause once it's fucking got you, choices are over. You know, don't sit around and fucking wait for life to gobble you up. As soon as you've got too many responsibilities before you've actually in, if you can get immersed in your life's work, what you love, before you get yourself wrapped up in car payments and fucking rents and, and mortgages, you have a shot. But society teaches us, go to high school, go to college, get married, get a job, have kids. Then you wake up at fucking 40 going, is this it? Yeah. Fuck that shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking you know? That's awesome. Yeah. So, but realistically, when it comes down to it, everything I'm talking about has to do with everything I do, I'm going to put the pedal down. You know, I, I tell my, my little girls this all the time as a parent, but it truly, this goes through everything in my life. When I look back at anything I did, if, you know, and keep in mind, I've failed a fucking million times. Failure is a part of success, but if I don't achieve one of my goals, which, you know, that probably scares me more than anything else. I think I'm probably driven more by fear of not getting to my goal than the accolades of getting to it. But what I really, what I'm getting at here is that, you know, you you truly, truly have to look at, you you can't just kind of wake up and and start fucking moving through life. You've got to say, okay, this is what I'm doing. You got to give it your all. So when I look back, on anything that I was doing, parenting, 
you know, whatever it was, I can live with the fact that I did too much. I cannot live with the fact that I, that I laid up and that's deep water in a nutshell right there. You know, if I'm going to, if I'm going to be on one side of the fence, I'm going to be on the side of the fence that, you know, you, you you work too hard, you did too much, you know, you're going to fall one side of the next. That's, you know, there's, there's no, you, nobody lands right on top of the fence. Nobody wants to land on top of the fence, (laughs) Yeah. But I'm not going to look back at any part of my life and go, fuck, if I'd have tried a little harder, you know, that's that's that fucking high school reunion where everybody goes and talks about how fucking great they were in high school. Oh, fuck yeah. that. Sh- oh, man. <laughs> I can't stand that. That's the that's the worst thing ever. <laughs> oh, my God. No, I I have not gone back to any of my high school reunions because even at the five year mark, I'd kind of already started my go. And it was like, you know what? I'm a, I'm on a different page. You know, I I don't feel the need to talk about fucking senior year football, you know, let's relive that one game. (laughs) I bet bet everyone would be fucking like shocked to see you, though, because I bet you comparing the picture of you now to you in high school is probably. Oh, buddy. In my book, there's a couple of pictures. I was kind of a not at my fattest, but there were some pretty good chunky pictures. A little buck tooth fucker, you know, double chin. (laughs) You know, <laughs> that's funny, man. He- but it's, uh, you know, that, and that's, you know, looking back, of course, <clears throat> I have friends that are still very dear to me from all phases of my life, but they're dear to me because of who they are, you know, not because of, of, you know, it, it's been the, the way we've supported each other through our lives, irregardless of what we've done with our lives. You know, that's, that's the friend, you know, the friend that wants to come around you know, f- how many fucking Facebook requests I get from people I knew in yeah. fucking high school and college. And I didn't fucking know you then. Why do I want to know you now? Yeah, you I, know, I don't I need just, any I, new friends. I, listen, I got I barely got enough time for the people I love. I'm not going to fuck. I don't need more friends, you know. Right. <laughs> I'm that. Yeah. So <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, no, it's, this has been a this has been a pretty a pretty killer journey in my life. And I think one of the things I love to do is help people understand simplicity is what can really help you get to point A to point B. Everybody gets so convoluted with all of these details in a plan. And I tell people all the time, don't get lost in the details. You know, if you get over here in this detail and you execute it fucking perfectly, it might only have a maximum return of say 10% of your goal. Well, fuck that shit. Get over on something when you do it perfectly. You got 40% coming back. Yeah. You know, that's a great one too, right there. That's cardio and diet in a nutshell. Oh, yeah. Everybody's on fucking cardio. You know, if you did cardio perfectly at the right time every day, you have about probably less than 10% of your ability to burn, you know, to lose body fat. The diet is that huge chunk. Everybody wants to sit on the fucking bike and eat ice cream. It doesn't work. You cannot out train a bad diet. You know, I've been trying for a long time. So, (laughs) dude, God, in my pro career, I got my next show is May 26th. I think I what is either 10 or 11 weeks right now. I don't think I'll do fucking cardio probably till three four weeks out if I need it because the diet is where it all is. Now, granted. I also have my training laid out a little smarter so I get hits in my training. Yeah. But, you know, the bottom line is this. Sitting on a fucking bike for 45 minutes when you have potentially a 9% return on burning body fat, fuck that shit. I'll eat the way I need to do. I'll kick ass in the gym. That's where all the progress is made. And I don't spend time doing shit that I don't want to do, yeah. you know? There you go. <laughs> I think, I think that's, that's what a lot of people like. Like uh, – when you go to like some of these commercial gyms, you'll see people and they'll do a set and then they'll be on the, on the phone oh, texting uh, and stuff. And so you're not really pushing yourself. They, they, they're thinking they're pushing themselves, but you're not really, you know, you're not taking advantage yeah. of that training. Yeah. They don't realize no. the, the oh. rest breaks are yeah. ten, four ten minutes, minutes. <laughs> four minutes long. They, they think it's like 30 seconds in reality. It's you no, know. well, you know, going to the gym for people is almost like, yeah, I went to the gym today. Well, who fucking social cares? experience. You went to fucking work too. Did you get anything done? Yeah. yeah. You know? Exactly. I mean, if you're just showing up to fucking work to punch a clock, you know, that's almost like they're doing this. It's, that's the mentality that kills people. Oh, yeah. Right. It's, it's fucking hurry up and wait to die. Fuck that shit. How about drop the pedal and fucking live? There you go. You know? 
I have no issues, and I've known this from the jump. I knew my pathway of life was probably going to probably cut off the last decade of my life, and I have no issues. I, I will, when the time comes when I'm ready to go, I will tell everybody sitting next to me before my last breath, do not fucking shed a tear. I would do the exact same thing again yeah. because I'm not fucking, I'm not living to, I'm not sitting around. I'm going to get what I want, yeah. you know? And it's, you know, it's, it's the difference between someone. When you leave this place, do you think our creator intended for us to have a fucking physical being that was in perfect shape? Fuck no. If I leave here and there's a fucking shred of anything left in my body, I didn't go hard enough. You know? Amen to that. There you go, man. Amen to that. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're here to live, you know? Yeah. Somehow society has got us duped and, oh, let's fucking, let's do this, let's do that. I want to live to be 105. I'm not sitting around shitting on my pants for the last 15 years of my life. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, you know, I, I you was know? the same exact thing for sure. It's funny as hell. <laughs> I don't, want, I don't want to be that person. Yeah. That's... So speaking of training, I got to ask, man, what do you, what, what's a trap workout looking like? You know, dude, it's crazy. Everybody says trap, 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 trap. And here's the thing you got to understand is that <clears throat> the trap is, is a piece of, you know, it's, it's a piece of the shoulder girdle. So like, I don't do a ton of bicep curls either. I do a fucking shitload of pull-ups and I do a shitload of standing overhead press. I don't think you probably have ever met anybody who has, in my strongman days, fuck man, I pulled 405 off the rack and do sets of five with overhead, you know? Wow. What the fuck? Yeah, but there was also, <laughs> my, my life was to be strong, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Now it's like, you know, even still, like when I'm, when I'm working my shoulders, you know, I say I put on 225 and I knock out 15 standing, uh, standing strip reps and I'm going to jump over. I may go to a set of dips or hell, I might go to a set of lateral raises and do it immediately afterwards. I mean, I'm, I'm burning up muscle tissue deeper than people would ever imagine. But of course, everybody thinks, oh, how many shrugs do you do? Yeah, Fuck. Right. You just don't fucking get it, do you? You know, <laughs> no. you know, it's like you're focused on that detail again. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's a result. Fucking get on the fucking focus on the meat and potatoes. The details are going to work themselves out, you know? Yeah. So, <clears throat> but I think that's the thing. If if I would say at least twice a week, I'm going to do a minimum of 20 to 25 sets of standing uh, Olymp, you know, standing barbell press. You know, I don't know very many people that do that. No. You know, no, I'm, I work I'm every group. doing that for sure. Oh, yeah. I, <laughs> me too. I'm going to do it every. I work time. every group, every muscle group, twice a week, and so the shoulders. I I basically pair my shoulders and my pecs. Uh, my shoulders and chest. And so basically the first workout is going to be <clears throat> in my big supersets. The first one will be say pr the, the chest will be first, then the shoulders. And then the second one will be shoulders, then the chest. That makes sense. So one side's getting hit primary, one secondary, but they're both getting hit twice a week hard. Now, granted my nutrition is fucking rocking on the right on point. So I can recover from that. Most people, they can't train the way I train and yeah. recover. Because they don't, they're not coming. I eat, I eat literally. I'm not shitting you. I will eat 11 times a day. You know, I'm up. At my first meal is five o'clock in the morning. I eat every two hours after, and then people say, "Well, how do you eat that many times every two hours?" It's 22, 22 hours. Well, because I'm fucking smart with my meals. I train right, so I have every two hours till I train. Then I train. Then I the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to suck down two cups of straight up pasteurized egg whites. Right. 30 minutes later, a meal. Um, 60 minutes later, a meal. 60 minutes later, a meal. So there's there's three basically full blown two meals and, and a big shot of straight up very high, highly bioavailable protein going in into my system all within two and a half or two hours, two and a half hours tops post training. Uh, so that's how the 11 fits in. And the last one is right before I go to bed, you know? Awesome. And then uh, in the beginning, it's my, my split on my time for meals is two. But then after it, so like I'm uh, egg whites down, 30 minutes meal down, hour later meal down. Then it goes to 90 minutes for two. And then it goes back to two hours. So I'm really, I'm really, you know, backloading my training. That's where we need the nutrients. Yeah. 
know? After you tear everything down. What else do you do for your recovery besides the nutrition? Do you do anything kind of in particular? Uh, you know, I would say that, you know, I'm pretty good about um, going to bed early. You know, that's another thing, too. People are always up fucking late. Yeah. And I would rather get up early to have my time because in the morning you're productive. You're not fucking productive at 11 o'clock at night. No. You're laying on your fucking ass thinking about all the shit you should have done. <laughs> That's funny. So I go to bed. I, I swear to God, it, it, if you see me walking around the house after nine o'clock, something's gone haywire for the day. <laughs> and a lot of times I'm as bad as early as eight o'clock. That's crazy. And, but here again, this is part of, this is part of my commitment to, to be in the best that I can be, yep. you know? You got to do it. I mean, right. every time I don't get to bed on time, I realize that, fuck, there's an hour that I just sacrificed towards greatness or my next goal. Wow. When I'm up at five o'clock in the morning, I'm fucking up. I'm banging around. I'm, dude, I'm so fucking productive at that time in the morning. Nobody's up. Everybody leaves me the fuck alone. I can get so much shit done. I mean, I, I mean, I love to create, whether it be, you know, training stuff, you know, my second ebook, you know, I'm always, I'm actually in the process right now of creating, um, subscriptions for my deep water program and for my $10 fit. So people can go in and literally don't even, it's not 40 bucks. Sometimes people don't have, okay, well here in about two months, you're going to be able to go in and spend literally just 10 bucks. And every, every fucking week, you're going to get a new workout, drop your email box for 10 bu- email box for 10 bucks a month, you know? Awesome. So I'm always, I'm, I'm always, I'm in a big phase of creating with the edge of helping people who can't really access me on a one-on-one basis. And so I'm here again, I'm up, I'm jamming, I'm doing my thing. So my recovery is my commitment to the schedule. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Total sense. You know, I mean, when <clears throat> I've traveled so fucking much in my life, you know, I don't feel like I'm missing anything. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm, I love my, every, for me, every day is the same, you know, and I like it that way. Yeah. I've always, I've always kind of had a hard time going to sleep early. I don't get, I don't get tired until pretty late at night. Um, do you have any like tips or well, anything? Hold on, on up. Well, you don't get tired late at night because what time do you wake up? Probably like eight or nine. There we go. Yeah. Start getting up at five in the morning. See when you want to go to bed. I know. Well, it's it's hard to just get in that routine. <laughs> it is. I'll give you that. But yeah. once you're there, you're going to be addicted to the produ- the productivity of the yeah. lifestyle. Oh, I would no, I would love to go to bed way earlier. But I don't know, my mind's racing and everything. So I was going to ask you if you have any tips or tricks or anything for falling asleep. Like is there any supplements or anything you take? So here's what you got to do just like anything else, you're just going to have to pay a consequence. You know, nothing's free. You're going to have to just set that fucking alarm, get the fuck up at five in the morning. It's going to hurt. But by the third or fourth day, yeah. eight o'clock at night, you're going to be like wanting to go to bed. Now you've made the shift. Yeah. Now the keys, you got to stay there. Because when you get up at five in the morning, and one of the things I'll tell you, this is crazy, but it's so true. I don't even have a fucking snooze on my I, I turn the snooze off. Because if I don't get up when the fucking alarm goes off, I've already started the day with the with the vibe of procrastination. You know, you got to get down to the fucking roots of the programming. Yeah, okay. People that sit there and hit that fucking snooze, oh, it's they're addictive. already behind the eight ball. I didn't even it's realize a, you could turn that off. Well, then just have the nuts to fucking get up. When it goes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I used to, I tried putting my, uh, I tried doing this recently, but I put my phone in a different room. And uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Hey, let's. Listen, man, there's so many ways, you know, there's so many ways to, to kind of, you know, course yourself in the right direction. But here's the thing. Once you make the change and you're up at that time in the morning, don't get up and just twiddle your thumbs, get up and have a list of shit that you want to accomplish. And when you get up and you get this jump start of the day, the feeling you're going to have is going to be so different than where you were before, where you're always kind of, you're getting up and you're kind of moving at the, the rate of everybody else. You're probably always yeah. a little busted for time in the morning. You know, mm-hmm. you can totally, you literally, you can totally reverse this in a matter of no time. There was a, a thing I read years ago. I shouldn't say read. I don't read worth a shit. <laughs> <laughs> I heard, <clears throat> um, and it was the, basically the fact that the most, and I've already been doing this. So it was just affirmation. The most successful people in the world get up three hours before they're supposed to be somewhere because 
their morning and their first part of their day is filled with self-improvement. Yep. Yeah. We don't live in we, Americans don't live a life of self-improvement. We live a life of fucking self-gluttony. We are always running from fucking problem to problem because we don't plan ahead. Tomorrow's success is planned today. You don't fucking wake up tomorrow morning and su- success flops in your lap. Success is going to fall in your lap because you know exactly where it's going to fucking fall because you know where to sit to grab it because right. you planned it out yesterday. <laughs> yeah, some deep shit right there, John. Hell yeah. yeah no. What's that? I said that's some deep shit right there. What man. was that, brother? That's some deep shit. <laughs> I'm motivated as it's, fuck it's, right now. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, Phil, it's, it is nothing more than mental programming. Oh, yeah. You know, it's just like if, you know, if you programmed yourself this way from the time you were little, you wouldn't know it. Or you, if your parents did, I should say, you wouldn't know any better. Right. You know, my daughter, this is a great fucking story. I got to go here pretty quick. But I remember I was telling you, we're talking. I was like, dude, we're, I'll burn up an hour. You're going to ask me oh, two yeah. fucking questions. We'll have to do a second one, you know? Yeah, we'll, we'll do another one. Yeah. For sure. But I tell my, my daughter, I've, I've raised her the same way. And uh, she's, you know, she's a cheerleader. I'm so proud of her. She just, their cheer team actually just, a month ago, they won the, the state championship. Then they went and won the fucking national championship. Oh, That's fuck crazy yeah. stuff. Wow. Okay. Anyway, but the bottom line is, you know, she's a she's a sophomore up on the varsity team, you know, because I push her, man. I there's I she's been raised with no excuses. She's dating the fucking quarterback of the team and all this shit, the football team. And uh she breaks up with him. I said, Hey, you know, what's up? Why'd you break up with Jake? She said, Oh, you know, Daddy, he makes too many excuses. I'm like, hey, yeah, yeah, inside I'm like, I'm just bubbling inside, I'm like, yes, it's work, it's it's here. She's pro- <laughs> And properly, you know, that's, that's fucking amazing. But it's time dude. to get something done. I mean, she just fucking goes to work. <laughs> yes, that's, that's, that's awesome, awesome man. Fuck wow. yeah, that's that had to make you so proud right there. Oh Jesus Christ! And it started off with little shit, like when she went from <laughs> elementary school to middle school. You go from having no letter grades to letter grades. Yeah. So it's all these fucking X's and O's to A B C D. You know. Yeah. So I said, okay, kiddo, here's the deal: seventh grade. If you get an A. I give you 40 bucks. You get a B, you get nothing. You get a C, you owe me 40 bucks. <laughs> yeah, dude. And Sad. she took the deal yeah. and she got fucking straight A's the whole year. Wow. So she made a grip of fucking cash for a you know, seventh grader. Yeah. And I, told, I said, okay, you deserve this, but the standard is now set. No more payments for grades. You know you're a straight A student. Keep right. going. Get it done. And that's what she, she gets an occasional B in an AP class. But I basically groomed her thought process into the standard. Most people will give themselves – they make so many fucking excuses for themselves, they never reach their potential. No, they give themselves an, an, an escape just in yeah. case it doesn't work out. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Man, you guys are cool as shit. I had a great fucking time on this show. You know? <laughs> we appreciate having you, John. Yeah, this man. was fucking awesome. Yeah, dude. You, you, yeah. You said a lot of shit that's got me thinking, man, because I'm, def- <laughs> I'm definitely the, the sleep until 12, get up and twiddle my thumbs and think about what I'm going to do for the day. And a lot of the stuff that you said really has got me like, damn, let's fucking go. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm telling you, go to my Instagram and download my book. My book is yeah. it's it's part motivational. There's a shitload of workouts in there. There's some dieting guidelines. I'm telling you, it, it really, really helps people get out of the gate. So all you got to do is go to my Instagram. What's my handle? Fuck, I don't even know. I, I follow you. It's John. What is it? Uh, the John. Fuck, I look. The <laughs> underscore John, J-O-N underscore Anderson, A-N-D-E-R-S-E-N underscore IFBB Pro underscore <laughs> ifbb underscore pro you, jesus Christ. you gotta add strong man fucking yeah, that thing. god damn it you know <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll link it below don't, people, but people anyway i'm you. telling you that's right now it's it's a fucking wealth of free shit in there you know and you can get my uh, you can get my i'm gonna leave my book free down there on that on that link on my instagram for probably another month or two so your listeners should hear this by then yeah oh yeah yeah well, this will be up ne- this wednesday so yeah oh perfect be- perfect yeah. are you guys in la too no we're in o- southern oregon we're about like five hours oh, north shit. of you yeah 
Dude, I fucking went to University of Portland. That's, you know, when I was a fat little boy looking for the my dreams in the fucking container. I was up in the Northwest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're, we're, yeah, when we're you're in s- Grants Pass. It's like four hours south. Oh, of yeah, yeah. I, I do. I know exactly where you're, right by Ashland. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah right there. We just opened yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got to get, get you up here one of these days. We, we just opened our facility last year. You know, I was going to say, it's always a lot of fun. Like when I do Mark Bell's podcast, now he does it all in house, you know? So yeah. we'll have to work it out sometime where we come and do one of these, but I'm in the studio with you guys. That'd be fun. Hell oh, yeah. Awesome, awesome, Let's do that. I'm yeah. Down. Whenever. I'm down. <laughs> Every time. So so when's your next show? You said May 26th. May 26th. May 26th, May 26th Cal Pro. Okay. Everything's coming along, coming along beautifully. Can't complain. Um, haven't done a fucking lick of cardio yet. Probably won't until the very end if I need it, you know? Hell yeah. So, uh, but no, it's, it's good, man. It's, life is good. And I really thank you guys for having me on the show. Yeah. We'll definitely have to, uh, we'll definitely have to do something again in the future. Yeah, we'll have to for do sure. a part two. You can explain the deep cheeks to us. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. That's great. All right, John. Well, we appreciate having you on, man. You got it, guys. Have a good day. Take you it too, easy. Man. Right on. <laughs> that was awesome, man. That oh. dude, he can change your perspective, and that's what a lot of people need. Yeah. You know, perspective is fucking everything, but. Yeah, everything he was saying, I was like, man, like, lately. Like I've, it resonated le- with you. Yeah, like, lately. You're like, dude, he's talking to me. Lately, I've been on a kick where, uh, due to work, I've had to wake up at, like, 6 o'clock in the morning for, like, two weeks straight and work these super long hours, and I hated it at first, but now. I've been really motivated to try and wake up early every single day because I feel super productive. Yeah, yeah you're probably shit. getting a lot more shit done. I, get, I am getting a lot of shit done. And I remember before, like, waking up fucking 10 minutes before work, going to work, and then not doing shit afterwards. Like, I would get home and feel so empty. Like, what did I do with my day? Right, yeah. And so what he was saying with, like, getting up early, like, being productive and shit, like, I, I fuck I think it. about that sometimes, too. Like, I'll wake up a little later. Like, if I wake up, like, past 9.30... I wake up like pissed off because I'm like, yeah, I'm the same way. This is a You're late like, fuck. fuck. I'm like, fuck, dude. This yeah. is a late fucking day. And then like, I'll go downstairs, maybe eat whatever. And by the time I like really sit down in my office and get to work and stuff, I look at the clock and it's like you know, ten something. And I'm like, I don't know. I just feel like I've wasted my day already. I just um, and yeah. it's like it just sucks, dude. It's disheartening. Yeah. But that's the issue with. Being like freelance because back when I had like a corporate America you job, had a schedule that you had to stick, and it's like what John was talking about. Yeah, you had a schedule, and once you I get worked, off your schedule, I worked like thirty minutes away. I had to be there at eight thirty, or I'd get fired. <laughs> and uh, back in those days, dude, there was a stretch of time where like I would work out at like four thirty with Brittany every morning, and we did that, and it wasn't even hard getting up. It was like no, after it was while, what I did. After a while, it's not hard. Like I get up. You're up super three early. times a week. I, I train somebody at five thirty in the morning, so I got to get up before that. But um, it gets to the point where even on the days that I'm not getting up that early to train somebody, like my body just naturally yeah, wants yeah. to get up, and then I feel not as I don't know. I feel like not as accomplished if I'm not up yeah. at that time. Yeah. So it was like I feel like I'm already behind. Yeah, exactly. And then because well, I am behind, and then you feel flustered too. Like yeah, like on those days, like on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I don't have to be up that early, and so I wake up and maybe I'll be like, oh, I'm asleep in a little bit today, and then I feel super fucking yeah. flustered and I, I everything's yeah. rushed, and then it throws off your whole fucking day. Yep. Right. I don't know, dude. John John was a cool. He was cool as fuck, man, and he had. So much good shit to say. So much, he motivated me for sure. No, I feel I'm so like, he's a gangster. So man. motivated, yeah. yeah. He's ready. He's yeah, a, I'm ready, dude. Like we, that we shit should, was we like. Should, maybe we do his program. I, I got the book. That sounds maybe, yeah. Maybe that sounds like fun, dude. I'm gonna his download program. that. Yeah, his book. Right Everyone, uh, we're, I'll throw the link in the description box and on YouTube. It'll be in the description box. Uh, to I'll put the link to his website as well as the link to his Instagram, and you guys can check out the book as well because. That's an awesome opportunity that he's given that away for free. I mean, it's oh, yeah. I, I downloaded it. It's, it's like 90 pages. It's like a wow. substantial book like that he put a lot of effort into. And so he's giving it away for free, and yeah. you might as well hop on it, even if you're not even going to try it right away, you know, just down the road. Mm-hmm. If it sounds too intense for you right now, maybe, and then down the road, try it again, you know. But uh, he's a fucking gangster, though. Uh, dude. <laughs> so much information and just real down to earth guy. I was like, wow. 
I could funny. not stop listening to everything. I was just so like, I didn't even have like responses because I'm just like, motherfucker. Like, Do I listen to guys like that all, like all the time where they'll be talking about things that are like relative to my life, like yeah. super relative. And uh, obviously they don't realize it. I mean, they don't yeah. even know who I am or anything. It's like a, you know, a podcast or something. And uh, the whole time I'm like, I feel like I was like meant to listen to this. Yeah. It was it's so, like, it's weird. You it know? was su- It was super weird. The whole time he's talking, I'm like, is this motherfucker talking to me? Because <laughs> damn, I feel like he is. <laughs> he touched my soul. I'm like, I feel like John's being like, Jay, get the fuck up off your ass. Okay. Yeah, and dude. do some shit with your life. I'm like, wow, John, you're right, bro. He's not trying to hear no excuses. He's either, not man, trying so. to hear no excuses, bro. Yeah. I keep thinking about how his daughter said that. I was like, fuck. Dude. Yo, I was dude, like, if his daughter could say that's that. Savage. That's awesome, awesome dude. Fuck, I, She's going. I would be sure. stoked. Like yeah, that. I can't imagine how he felt when when she told him. That's that. great parenting, dude. That's. The, I can't imagine how the quarterback felt when she broke up with him because of that. You just make too many excuses. He's like, oh shit. He's like, fuck, you're right. Probably come to Jesus right there. He's like, fucking, like reevaluate. Yeah, his yeah life he's like, right. damn. I probably did not. Game probably did not expect it. How, yeah. What did he tell his parents? Yeah. Well, she said I make too many excuses. <laughs> he probably made an excuse. Well, yeah, you do. Actually. Yeah, he, he did. probably yeah, made an excuse. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that's and that's another thing. So, like, that's I, true. Yeah, I make so many fucking excuses not to do this, not to come to the gym this day, not to do a video that day, or to post this day because I'm too fucking busy doing other shit. But I'm really not. It's really just all excuses. And like, Rob is one of the biggest people when it comes to calling me out on excuses. Oh, for sure. Every single time I say I'm not able to do something, that's, <laughs> that's a fucking excuse, bro. Well, dude, I do not fuck with it. And I'm like, damn it, you're right. And it makes me mad because it's like, why am I making these excuses? And honestly, with everything that's been going on right now, like, I, 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 me personally, I've been more motivated than ever to, to get shit done, you know? Good. Yeah. It's, t- it's typically not like me to be here at eight o'clock in the morning for a podcast or try and come to the gym before work. Like, I just had a conversation with Rob three weeks ago about, oh, I don't really have time to come to the gym before going to work. I was fucking here yesterday, three hours before work, getting a killer chest session. Sending it. I don't think showered I've ever and went seen to work. You. I don't think I've ever yeah. seen you before 10 a.m. Never. Never. That, that because it doesn't, I've ever it seen doesn't you. happen, bro. But lately, I've just been like, fuck it dude like let's go let's yeah. do something productive and honestly i don't know well even even this morning for me like because i live like 40 minutes away <laughs> so i had to wake up kind of early for me at least and it was like i think i woke up at like six and i went downstairs and ate a good breakfast and stuff and uh yeah i was tired when i first got up but i walked around let the dogs out and like five minutes later i was like fine yeah. i felt like exactly how like i feel ready. at like 10 so that's you know, and I'm like, dude. You know, it, it, that, that's the trick, though. Is I've I've heard that actually is when you the first thing you do when you wake up, you don't look at your phone. You get up out of bed, yeah. and you walk around. You walk around for maybe five ten minutes, and then you can go do your other shit. But don't sit there. Don't don't roll over. Look at your phone, yeah. and then get up because you're gonna be kind of drowsy. Yeah, they yeah. get up and fucking walk. The, the what do they say? Like the first thing, the first thing you do in the morning is what like dictates dictates mm-hmm. the rest of your day so like a lot of times a lot of times i won't look at my phone in the morning for like a few hours <laughs> and uh or i'll put it in my the other room or whatever so i do get out of bed um but if i look at my phone and i see an email that sucks oh it it's like tone. it's like i'm like, I, like why, today's would I wanna, done. why would i want to get up now yeah you know what i mean it i'm going back to tone. sleep fuck this <laughs> so like i get up i'm like excited to go i'm ready to go like mentally and yeah. then i'll check my phone and stuff and like you know, get after if there's an issue or something, but, but yeah, for sure. In that same regard though, people also need to realize too, that just cause the day starts out shitty doesn't mean you can't change it. Like that's, oh, not, that's not an excuse to let the day go to mm-hmm. shit. Yeah. yeah. Like I, I was doing it. Chrissy woke up the other day and she was like all flustered and she was late oh. and she was having a shitty morning, mm-hmm. like dropped her stuff, like dropped her food or something. And she's like, dude, this is fuck, fuck today. You know? And I was like, no, nah, it's not. It's not too late. You know, you can turn it yeah. around. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Things will get better. Mm-hmm. And she texted me later that day. She's like, "You were right. Like the day got better. Like she got like she got like a little. Sure. She got like an extra money that she wasn't expecting. She, you know, yeah, yeah. The day went better. And but she had to have that outlook. Like before she left the door, I was like, it's gonna get better. Like chill. Yeah. You know. Well, I've yeah, like I've tweeted little things like, how's everybody? You know. Yeah. How you guys doing today? Like little things like that, and I'll get a response and stuff, and like. I remember one time, like, this person was like, my day's, like, yeah, like, super shitty right now. And this was, like, in the morning. It was, like, the first thing in the morning. And I was like, well, you still got, like, 12 hours left yeah. to yeah. have a still good fucking day. Like, it's, yeah, I mean. Just because the day started out shitty, 
is not an excuse to let it continue. And, to be right, and yeah. for me, unfortunately, like I am one of those people that like if some if shit doesn't go right in the first like two hours of being awake, I will be upset about it for the rest of the fucking. I'll literally just think about it at work. And be like my well, fucking. Morning. Sometimes even if work is good and everything else after the shitty two hours of waking up is good, it doesn't matter because for I just get stuck on the negative. And I think like with most most people. You know, there's so much focus put into negativity than there is in positive. Well, I think I think it's just human nature. Yeah, you know? it's human nature, but you got to build that habit. It's like it was. Oh, absolutely, about. yeah, and that's, you got to build that habit of yep. you know, it's gonna get better. It's mm-hmm. gonna be better. Well, and yeah, and when he was saying like sometimes the uh, when he was talking about like sometimes the worst things in life that happen to you are the best things that happen to you. Oh, it's a hundred. I on it like that's like with everything. When he said that, I was like, oh my god, like it's great because <laughs> like. For those who didn't know, me and my girlfriend recently broke up, but uh, that was probably one of the best things to happen for me because I've I've been so fucking motivated to wake up early as fuck, go to the gym every yeah. single fucking day, be here, be present, just like grind. And uh, I don't know if I I don't know if I could have done that, you know, being with her. No, well, you, that, were, you were comfortable. I, I was I was comfortable. I was I was able to sleep in. I was able to you know not give a shit about like my life. I could just do whatever because I had someone who who didn't really you know want to push themselves and so it made yeah. it easy for me to not push myself for anyways sure. i thought i thought that when me and my lady broke up when me and my ex broke up i was like oh fuck this is the end of the world like this sucks what am i gonna do now honestly i'm fucking doing great yeah i've been grinding i've been working hard I, I'm, I'm losing weight i'm down to 270 like fucking let's go dude about to get that 240 i mean no i i'm gonna hey. try i yes i'm gonna get it no but seriously though it's it's been <laughs> <laughs> it's it's been dope. It's yeah. been dope. Yeah. Well, you are who you surround yourself with. Exactly, and, and especially 100%. your significant other. That's the thing, because like, like Brittany, my wife, she like she goes so hard with her career. It's crazy, and she's constantly progressing. And like, yeah, just being successful, and like I'm around that constantly, seeing that, hearing about that, whatever. So I want to elevate my. I ha- I have to. You elevate have to. My yeah. Shit. I can't. What am I gonna do? Just not do shit. But like, but if I was around somebody that was just like didn't do anything was you know didn't care about it was negative and stuff i would probably be like that i'd be more comfortable yeah like you know it, that's the whole point that's why they call the significant other they're yeah. not just a, they an, make an, an impact on your and, on your outlook exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. and honestly like you just you like now it's like i cannot be with somebody who doesn't have the same yeah. grind as me and you wouldn't and know if that you should, if you should. you're lazy I, I can't do it bro like yeah. Have a fucking plan. Have goals. Be, do your damn thing, bro. Like, and you, but you wouldn't be like this if it wasn't for the. Show. I, I wouldn't. And yeah, if I didn't have, if I didn't, go, if I would have stayed with my ex for like, let's say, another two years, bro. I don't know, man. I've already made such huge improvements in my life. I feel like, you know what yeah. I mean. And well, it's I, I can tell. And it, it's only, yeah, it's only been like two weeks, bro. I can even tell. Yeah, just I little mean, actions. I appreciate it. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. Yeah, I'm no, not it's, super it's, observant. It's but, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's, I don't know, bro. It's cool. It's. It's eye opening, and John today, good, man, though. he just said so much shit that I was like, "Fuck, bro!" Like, yeah, dude, just, it's good to listen to like people like that, and that's why we're trying to do this thing. You know, that's mm-hmm. why we're trying to do this podcast. Get people on here, yeah, that have different outlooks, and yep. At, at the end of the day, it's all the same message, though. If you look at it, it really is, like, yeah. Between Ryan well, yeah. and and uh, some of the other guys that we've had on, you know, it's all been kind of the same message. You know, mm-hmm. no excuses. Get shit done, you know. Yep, get shit done, man. Change the outlook in your mind, you know. Don't let the limitations you set on yourself dictate how your life continues to be. Yeah. And shit, I mean, that's the foundation of our company mm-hmm. and be, the story. Be better. So, shit, this was fucking awesome, dude. This was a super good podcast. And for me, I've, I've talked a lot on here today, I feel like. But for me, honestly, guys, for me personally, like, I needed to be here to hear that shit because it, it helped me a lot today i'm like just i'm motivated that's good. i'm Ready super to go fucking, crush a lift right now mm, yes see. i i need to eat though probably yeah, I'm, I'm down with that i gotta i'm probably gonna go stop by like get a sandwich or something for sure but yeah i'm ready to lift if you want it if you're down to lift. let's do it okay <laughs> that's a good sign off point all right down guys. To lift. <laughs> well if if you're listening to this on itunes make sure you guys give us a five-star review it helps the podcast and everybody that's listening to this Tell one friend. That's your homework before next episode. Tell a single friend to check us out. If you're on the YouTube, make sure you leave a comment, leave a like, hit the subscribe button. You guys are fucking awesome. I'm James Mooney. Rob Tremonti. Jeremy New. We are Gunsmith Podcast. Peace. Peace.